Okay, this is uh, another section from chapter 6 on solving radical equations, i.e. rational exponents. So the two main goals is to solve in both forms, radical and exponential form, and to look for extraneous solutions. We're going to talk a lot about that today. Here are the four main steps for all these problems. Always isolate the radical and or exponent. Take care of the exponent or radical by raising to the needed power. Solve then linear algebra and then go ahead and check your answer. And that's the big key right here because we are going to have some piggyback answers called extraneous solutions. Let's take a look at a couple, two problems to get us warmed up. We've seen these before. We have the square root of x equals 5. How do you undo something that's a square root? You do the opposite and you square it. Do it to both sides. So now we have x equals 25. Looks pretty good. Doing the next problem, what do we do here? We do the same thing. We square both sides and notice we get x equals negative 4 squared is positive 16. So that looks pretty normal, but let's go back and check our answers and let's see if it works out. If I put 25 in for x, does the square root of 25 equal 5? Yes, it does. Okay. Going back here, if I put 16 in for x, does that equal negative 4? When at last I look, the square root of 16, when I evaluate, is simply 4, and it does not equal negative 4. So this is no, uh, no real solution. Okay. And what we have here is an extraneous solution. And what happened is, once you introduce... Uh, a square here where you raise to a power, all their answers per, could show up. Okay, So you always have to check your answer to see if it's going to work. Let's take a look at a better example to show where extraneous solutions come from. So here we have x equals negative 4. Let's just do the same process. Let's just square both sides. So now we have x squared is equal to negative 4 squared, which is 16. Let's simply undo what we just did. Well, I'll take the square root. So the square root of x squared is x, and what's the square root of 16? Okay, plus or minus 4. And what we have here are two possible solutions, possible being the two, the key word, and here we really only have one solution. Okay, so what we have to realize is which one of these two happens. Well, here we have x to the first degree. And now we're working with x to the second degree, which yields two potential answers. So what you have to do is take both those answers and plug it in. Does 4 equal negative 4? No. Okay. But negative 4 equals negative 4, so that is the correct answer. And we have to check our answers. Because you can go through the algebra correctly and come up with answers, but not necessarily always going to work out towards the original problem. So this is called extraneous solutions. It's like a piggyback answer that jumps on. Throughout the problem, at the end, you have to decide, does this answer belong, yes or no? All right, so let's take a little bit closer look at some more complicated problems. Notice we have to isolate. So what we have to do is get this portion by itself, which it is. How do you undo a cube root? Well, now you raise it. So I'm going to raise it to the third power, both sides. So the cube root and the radical, uh, the cube and the radical, cancel each other out, and you're left with 2x plus 7 is equal to 27. Now the simple linear algebra gets us to x equals 10. And once again, check your answer. So we have 2 times 10 plus 7. The cubic root of that is 3. So it does check out. Okay. Let's look at the second example here. Now what we have here is we have to get this portion by itself. So we need to first divide by 2 to isolate the radical. So now we have the cubic root of x minus 3 is equal to 2. And now we say, okay, let's go ahead and cube both sides, raise it to a power to undo the radical. And we have what's inside over here and a over there. So x is equal to 11. Once again, check your answers. Let's move this out of the way. And we're going to put in 2 times the cubic root of 11 minus 3. Does that all equal 4? Well, let's see. 8, cubic root of 8 is 2, times um, 2 more does equal 4, so it does check out. So here we have, uh, going through the work, and again, most answers will check out. The extraneous solution shows up every now and again, but we do have to make sure we check every single time. Because it's very hard to look at the original problem or the work and understand if the extraneous solution is going to show up um, unless you, you know, get a lot of practice at it and you look for certain patterns. Okay, let's look at the same problem, but... Now in exponential form, 
Okay. So if I was to show this in radical form, let's first do that. This is the x squared, and we're finding the cubic root of that. And a lot of us say, well, what's the first thing we're going to do? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cube both sides. And then we're going to have x squared is equal to whatever 9 cubed is. And then we're going to take the square root of both sides. And when you do that, notice, when you take the square root of anything, we need that plus minus. And the square root of 9 cubed is going to be, oh boy, what's going to happen here? 27. Okay? A little, little mental math there. Okay? So notice we have two answers because we took the square root. Where do we see that at? Well, we see that right here. An even number in the numerator. Now let's take a look at it in exponential form. Let's talk about what happens. An easier way to solve this problem using the exponents. How do we undo that exponent? Well, if we have x to the 2 thirds power equals 9, we could simply raise that to the reciprocal, which is the 3 halves power, both sides. We say, all right, those cancel each other out. Now notice, see how we have a 2 in the denominator? That is the same thing as taking the square root. And once you do that, that is even plus minus. Okay? So when we see the uh, even number in the numerator, which means we're going to have to use an even number in the denominator to solve it, which really is an even index, an even root. So we're going to have a plus minus in our final answer. And then we look at this and say, all right, write this as an exponential form, now as a radical form, and we can say, what's the square root of 9 cubed? Well, the square root of 9 is 3, cube it, and we get 27. And it's a very simple way to solve that. Again, you have to check both answers, and let's go ahead and do that. If we check both answers, we're going to have um, the cubic root of 27 squared. Does that equal 9? And yes, it does, because that's 3 squared and the cubic root of negative 27 squared. Well, cubic root of negative 27 is negative 3, square that, and it's also 9. So both of those do check out. Okay. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our second example. Notice my numerator is odd, so you keep the same sign, because when you work the problem, if I go ahead and set it up here, I'm going to raise it to a power of 4 fifths. And here we have an odd denominator, odd root. So over here we're going to have to the, whoops, 4 fifths power. We'll just raise it like that. And notice the reciprocal fractions cancel each other out. And here we have the fifth root of 32 raised to the fourth power. Well, the fifth root of 32 is 2 raised to the fourth power is going to be 16. And we keep the same sign because we had an odd numerator, which meant an odd denominator when raised to the reciprocal, which means an odd index. Okay. Now we have another couple special cases here where we see things like this. What we have to do is, again, get this by itself. So we simply divide by 4, and we have x to the 3 halves is equal to 27. And we're going to raise it to the 2 thirds power, the reciprocal. And then we say, OK, x is equal to, what, what's the cubic root of 27? That's what the little 3 in the bottom means. Well, that's 3 squared which is simply 9. Okay. Now notice again, I had a odd here, so I'm going to keep the same sign. Okay. Over here, we had the same type of problem. First, we've got to move the 1 to the other side, and we have x plus 2 raised to the 3 quarters power is equal to 8. And once again, we're going to raise it to the 4 thirds power, both sides, and we have x plus 2 is equal to the cubic root of 8 to the 4th power. Well, if we look at this, the cubic root of 8 is 2, raised to the 4th power is 16, and let's move the 2 over and we get 14. Now again, what you want to do is you want to check both answers. I'm not going to write them out. It's going to kind of go through my head and check them. Put 9 in, square root of 9 is 3, cubic 27 times 4 checks out. Okay, so I'm just checking it. Put 14 in, add 2 is 16, 4th root is 2, cubic uh, 8 minus 1 does equal 7, so both those answers do check out. Okay? So you want to check those answers. We've got two more examples to show you. Okay? Now notice what we have here is, do we have an isolated radical? Yes, we do on this side of the equation. Okay? So how do we do that? We square it 
to get rid of that radical. Well, if you square one side, you have to square the entire side. So I'm putting a big box around it, really. I should use parentheses there, but I'm putting a big box saying we have to collectively square the whole side. So what does x plus 1 quantity squared look like? Okay. Well, that's going to be x squared plus 2x, don't forget that middle term, equals 7x plus 15. Okay, notice we have a quadratic, okay? So that's x squared. So now we need to get everything on the same side as the equation, because now it's a quadratic, and I'm going to try to factor it, which I can here. We have x minus 7 and x plus 2, okay? So now we have two potential answers, 7 and negative 2, okay? So x can equal this or that. So let's go ahead and check our answers. Because again, this is a time where extraneous solutions could show up. So I'm going to try 7 first. Okay, so 7 plus 1, does that equal the square root of 49 plus 15? Well, we have 8 is equal to the square root of 64. Checks out. Okay, so 7 is a viable solution. Okay, check negative 2. Negative 2 plus 1, does that equal 7 times negative 2, negative 14 plus 15? Well, that's going to be the square root of 1. Does that equal negative 1? Okay. Well, it does not. Okay. So this is no, not a solution. So I'm going to cross that one out. So here the actual answer is just 7. Okay. But notice negative 2 piggybacked on because we had to jump up a degree to an x squared, a quadratic, which will yield two answers. And we only need one of them. Okay. Now here's about the most challenging problem we'll see in this section. Again, we have to isolate a radical. But notice, there's two radicals. So you can't do them at the same time. You have to do them one at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and square the one on the right first to get rid of that radical. Okay? So over here, nice and simple, x minus 3. But notice, we have x plus 2 inside the radical plus 1. So this is the same as a plus 1 quantity squared. Well, we're going to see that as a squared plus 2a plus 1. I'm going to replace the a with x plus 2. So we're going to have the quantity x plus 2, square it, plus 2 times x plus 2, plus 1. So notice how you just do a simple substitution to go through that algebra. So those cancel each other out, x plus 2. We have two of these plus 1. Okay? And notice, over here it has not changed. Okay? So now we're going to combine like terms, put those together. So we have x plus 3. And again, always copy the rest of the equation. Okay? Now we need to get this radical by itself. So I'm going to move everything else to the other side. And when I do, notice you get the 3's cancel each other out. And we get negative 2x over here. And we have a 2 x plus 2 inside the radical over here. So now, to get rid of this 2 in the front, to isolate it, we just divide, and we're left with x plus 2 is equal to negative x. A lot of people say, well, we can't have a number equal negative. Well, we don't know what that number is yet. So just pay attention here and follow through with the math. So we square both sides. x plus 2 is equal to x squared. Square net negative. Get everything to one side and set it equal to zero, and notice we can factor nice and simply here. And we have two potential answers of positive two and negative one, okay? So we have to check those answers. So I'm gonna go back up to the original problem up here. I'm gonna plug them in, I'm gonna first try two. The square root of two plus two plus one, is that equal three plus two on the inside, okay? Um, oh, I'm sorry, three minus two. Let's change that right there. 3 minus 2 on the inside. Well, well, here we have the square root of 4 plus 1. That's 2 plus 1 is 3. And over here, the square root of 3 plus 1 is the square root of 1. 3 does not equal 1, so 2 is not a correct answer. So let's go ahead and check the other answer. Okay, so negative 1. So we're going to have negative 1 plus 2 plus 1 on the outside. Does that equal the square root of 3 minus minus 1? So notice the two negatives make a positive. So on this side we have 2, and on this side we have 1 plus 1 is 2. So this checks out. So negative 1 is the correct answer. So now looking at this step here, the square root doesn't equal a negative x. It's the opposite of x. Well, 
The x was a negative 1. So what's the opposite of a negative? Positive, so we're still true to our math. Okay? So notice here, negative 1 is the only answer. Okay? So these are examples that we saw some in class. This, again, to highlight how to do solutions with radicals and rational exponents.